What is cryoglobulinemia? Cryoglobulinemia is a medical condition in which the blood contains large amounts of abnormal proteins called cryoglobulins. So what are cryoglobulins and how do they cause a problem? The cryoglobulins are abnormal proteins in your body and they clump together at cold temperatures below normal body temperature which is 37 degrees Celsius and 99 degrees in Fahrenheit and when the cryoglobulins clump, they form immune complexes that can cause inflammation and block blood vessels. This can cause damage to skin, muscles, joints, nerves and organs, especially the kidneys and liver. More rarely, it can also affect the heart, brain and gastrointestinal tract. Thus, cryoglobulinemia is a form of vasculitis characterized by inflammation of the blood vessels which can restrict blood flow and damage the vital organs and tissues in your body. What are the symptoms of cryoglobulinemia? The cryoglobulin proteins can be present in low levels in the blood without causing any symptoms. So some people may have no symptoms and the disease may only be detected in a blood test. But when the symptoms are present, they typically vary depending on the organ systems affected. The symptoms include skin rash with red spots or a purple discoloration of your skin, which is due to bleeding under the skin, which is also called purpura. You may also see hives, ulcers, and necrosis. Necrosis means death of your body tissues. Next symptom is peripheral neuropathy, which shows as numbness, tingling, or burning sensation of your fingers and toes due to nerve damage. You can also see Raynaud phenomenon, which is discoloration of hands in cold temperatures. You may also see joint or muscle pain, weakness, fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, and abdominal pain and kidney damage if your gastrointestinal tract and kidneys are involved. Your lungs may be damaged too, resulting in difficulty breathing. If the brain is damaged, you may see headaches or strokes. And if the heart is involved, you may see chest pain and congestive heart failure. So what causes cryoglobulinemia? Infections, particularly hepatitis C, and others include hepatitis B, HIV, Epstein-Barr virus, toxoplasmosis, and malaria. Certain blood cancers such as lymphoma and multiple myeloma, Waldens from macroglobulinemia can also sometimes cause cryoglobulinemia. Autoimmune disorders such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Chagrin syndrome can also increase the risk of developing cryoglobulinemia. What are the risk factors? The risk factors of cryoglobulinemia include being female. As with most other autoimmune diseases, cryoglobulinemia is also seen more frequently in women than in men. Being middle age. Symptoms of cryoglobulinemia usually begin in the middle age. And also having other diseases is also a risk factor. As I have said before, cryoglobulinemia is associated with diseases such as hepatitis C, HIV, multiple myeloma, Waldens from macroglobulinemia, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and etc. Now, let's see how it is diagnosed. In addition to your medical history and physical exams, the doctor may order a specific blood test to detect the presence and type of cryoglobulins in your blood and it can help determine the best treatment for the disease and find out the underlying cause of the condition. All patients with cryoglobulinemia should be tested for HCV. In addition to blood tests, the following tests are also likely to be ordered. Urinalysis in order to look for kidney damage. Imaging studies, chest x-ray, CT scans of the lungs, MRA, CTA, or angiograms to see images of your arteries, nerve conduction tests, which is also known as electromyography, EMG, in order to detect nerve damage in your arms and legs. Biopsy of the skin, bone marrow, liver, or kidney may be ordered, depending on the coexisting disease. Lastly, let's see the treatments of cryoglobulinemia. The treatment depends on the underlying cause of cryoglobulinemia and the organs affected. The symptoms of cryoglobulinemia typically improve when the underlying condition is treated. For mild cases, treatment is usually to avoid cold temperatures and taking the over-the-counter anti-inflammatory drugs, and you should also receive regular checkups to monitor the disease. But for moderate and severe cases, the treatments may include immunosuppressive drugs, especially when the vital organs are involved. Corticosteroids such as prednisone and immunosuppressants such as azathioprine and cyclophosphamide are widely used. Antiviral medications are also used to fight viral infections, especially for those with HCV. Rituximab is an effective biologic drug and has fewer risks than other medications. For severe or life-threatening symptoms, your doctor may also recommend plasmapheresis, which is a procedure which takes your blood plasma out of your blood circulation 
and filters the clumps of cryoglobulin. The plasma is then replaced by fluid, protein, or donated plasma. This helps prevent cryoglobulins from clogging your arteries, which then blocks the blood flow and damage the organs. Lastly, if you have cryoglobulinemia, it is very important to avoid the exposure to cold, especially to your fingers and toes. Whenever you are using the freezer or refrigerator or when you are out in the cold, you may want to use gloves. That's all for my video. If this video was helpful, it would be very nice if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.